thank you for yeah. joining no, us. It's my pleasure. Um, I just thought we'll start off with a broad brush view of IIT of today. You know, many alumni don't realize the magnitude of the changes that have come about. The IIT of today is uh, typically about four times the size in terms of number of students of the IIT of uh, 1980s, 1980-85, that period. About 10,000 students now. And uh, faculty size also is not, it's not four times, uh, but it's more like about two and a half, uh, uh, two and a half times. And um, because the um, bulk of the increase, I mean, uh, significant part of the increase in students, is, while the undergraduate student population has gone up by about three times, uh, from about 250, 300 to about uh, 800 now, and it will go a little further uh, in the next few years because of the new increase in intake. But um, half the campus student population is now com comprises of uh, research scholars, PhD students, and some master students. So. Um, that was that's a very different uh, mix from what it was in the uh, 80s, and therefore uh, you don't have the same proportionate faculty increase. All every faculty member now has a group size, a research scholar group size of about five or six, which is very different from our times, from those times when I we were students. That is one major change. The other change, of course, is that the infrastructure has grown uh, to, to keep up with this uh, growth. Both hostels, you know, we now have 20 hostels, uh, each hostel typically accommodating about uh, 400 students on average. Uh, we have uh, our uh, women um, uh, fraction, though we are not happy with it, is at uh, close to about 17-18%. Uh, we wanted to go up further. and uh, But therefore, we have now, uh, you know, f uh, f uh, four women's hostels and we are expanding further. The um, Because of the intensity of research now, the Research infrastructure has grown tremendously. A uh, lot of centers, a lot of equipment, a lot of labs uh, which are running 24 hours, a lot of sophisticated labs. And uh, therefore, we've added new buildings. In fact, the one you see at the side here, uh, or behind, uh, by the side of us, is the latest uh, big building to have been added. You know, after the first four big buildings, you know, that were built in the when the institute was started, uh, ESB, MSB, HSB, and uh, BSB. We added a number of other small specialized buildings, but the first really next big building is this one, and we're going to build one more like this uh, in the next two years. So um, these are all the big, you know, things that will hit you if you come and visit the campus. However, what you will notice is that all this has been done without changing the uh, basic structure of the campus. You know, the the greenery and the way the lay layout is done. Uh, there are lots of trees everywhere. This building right here, this is exa an example. Yeah. That banyan tree is an example of how. Yeah. In fact, this building itself, you know, the architect was given uh, the ch charter that he must uh, design this building for our needs. Uh, but uh, starting with the Google map, which has all the trees, uh, which cannot be cut. <laughs> so that's why you'll notice that this building has a very peculiar, interesting, but uh, trapezoidal shape. Because there were these big banyan trees, uh, which couldn't be cut. And um, so, you know, this is the way we do it. And this way, actually, uh, the first director, Professor Sengupta, also located the buildings. So it's that, that feature hasn't changed. Uh, we have, by and large, uh, you know, not cut uh, significant trees, and uh, in fact, the tree cover uh, by um, you know from the 60s to now has uh, has uh, only increased significantly. So, the if you come into the campus, your initial reaction might be that it's not very different. You know, the, there's a gate, and then you see a lot of trees on both sides, and you see deer, and and that way it hasn't changed. But then, if you look carefully, you will find that there are many more buildings, and they are all, and um, they are bigger buildings. These new buildings are all multi-story buildings, all going up to seven floors, and so on. The other thing that's happened just off campus, but it's almost part of the campus, is the research park, which is almost a third or half the size of the academic zone of uh, IIT Madras, and uh, it has so many companies and all our startups, and it's connected very nicely through a bridge. So it's also part of the campus, and that's a, that's of course unique in the country and. Uh, so, in the face of these non-incremental changes that you described, there are some things that have remained constant. We still get the best students in every degree program. Tell us a little bit about how we've been able to manage that. I mean, well, I think you know, uh, we uh, the the IIT is still attract you know uh, still the craze for the youngsters of the country still attract the best students. So, we the older IITs still continue to attract the top rankers in the uh, country, the undergraduate level. But even at the uh, uh, you know, one of the things we have done uh, is to to pump up the quality of the uh, uh, intake at the research level. Is to actually encourage people, bright students, to join our uh, 
research program at the master's level itself. That means to, uh, we actually look out for bright students uh, like the American universities do, um, who have finished their undergraduate and who are uh, possibly looking at a research uh, career and uh, we recruit them into a program that will give them a master's and PhD. If they change their mind for some reason, they can get out of their master's, so we don't uh, stop it. And that program brings in uh, about 100 to 150 and then some of our master's students come in here and then discover the joys of research and upgrade. So between these two, about 150 students a year, uh, really high quality students are upgrading to the PhD program and that's uh, our joining the PhD program at the end and after they're finishing the undergraduate and that's been a very important intake as far as the research program is concerned. Sure. And you know you talked about four to five uh, research scholars per faculty member yeah. and PhD research scholars yeah, these per are faculty PhD. member. These are, PhD so these are world class numbers by any stretch yes. of imagination. So in terms of the uh, you know the critical mass in terms of what you need to have uh, you know research output coming in a flow and you know, with steadily improving uh, parameters in terms of uh, the work quality of the research, you need this kind of a thing. Earlier we always did good research, we must not forget some of our pioneers in the institute who did fantastic research with very little in the 70s and 80s. Uh, but the, one of the things that hampered them was that it, typically they would be a group of one or two and every, every time they graduate one student to start again, it's like starting a new startup. You know, it's, there is no continuity. Mm. And uh, that used to hamper uh, the faculty, uh, the, even the best faculty at that time quite a bit. Uh, and that has changed now. And uh, of course, the resources needed for doing this kind of research is, are enormous. And uh, the, we are fortunate the government has had this program of growing research in this fashion in the country. Um, of course, it's never enough, so we're always struggling. But uh, it's a very important part of the new IIT the research focus yeah. and you know this growth that you described has been actually a planned phase you know you started out a strategic planning process you know in early in 2012 that that you you released a strategic plan in 14 and you know this last five years has been kind of a well chalked out implementation with with some distractions coming from other you know government sources their needs how is that process you know Unlike companies and particularly startups, I think education institutions have a great, uh, uh, you know, uh, inertia. It's not easy to turn them or uh, move them fast. Uh, it takes time to build up a research base. It takes time to recruit every even an individual research scholar lasts five years in an institution, and to grow the numbers. And if you want to change your focus, it takes time. So you have to do this in a planned fashion. It's not possible to say, okay, the next two years we will change our uh, research profile. It's not, it doesn't happen that way. You recruit people. When you recruit people, you're recruiting them for 35 years. So you got to sort of see where you want to go. And um, so we've been at this, you know, we've been, uh, IIT Madras has been approaching this in a planned fashion for, uh, very clear, both from about uh, late 90s, but particularly from 2002, that period to now. We had one decadal plan which we completed in 2010 or 11, then the second decadal plan is almost getting done now. Where we have a clear plan of how, how many faculty we're going to add in that period, how to do that, uh, you know, how, how, am I, how are you going to go the research, what is the kind of level of funding we're going to target, uh, what is the kind of research output outcomes we are looking for. Uh, because in I, the IITs in India are in a role where we are not just doing academic research, but we're also playing a role in the national, uh, you know, meeting the national challenges, whether it's water, energy, etc., etc. We are also part of this huge uh, online education program of the government. So there are many other roles that we play, which we have to factor in. And uh, faculty here are wearing many hats. Uh, we let them choose their hats, but uh, many faculty, most faculty are wearing two or three hats. And uh, um, we have to make sure that all of this sort of uh, goes in, without, and then our undergraduate program is a very important program, we have to make sure that that uh, keeps on growing in strength and changing to the needs of the times. So our curriculum revisions and uh, all of that. So it, if you look at our strategic plan on the website, you'll find seven or eight pillars on which it, uh, it is, look, it is uh, situated, uh, ranging from curriculum to research to funded research, industry collaboration, international relations, uh, and entrepreneurship now. This is a very important part. So all these student welfare, you know, because student life is also changing dramatically. Uh, kids now come from, uh, by and large, from nuclear families after having been single-mindedly focused on studies for three or four years. Um, some of their uh, uh, opening out, some of their flowering out, some of their uh, pers discovering of their personalities and all that now happens significantly at IIT. And we need to provide the opportunities for that. So, uh, 
you know, students are spending much more time in the hostels uh, than in the department. So we have to make sure that that time is, uh, is, is uh, turns out to be a very important, uh, well-spent uh, time from their point of view. So all of this has to be taken care of and that's what you will see in our strategic plan.